Hi there, I'm Lee Whittier, the Dog to Mentor, and I'm happy to be here today, and I'm happy that all of you are here today. Um, our sport is so special, and um, so what we're going to talk about today is uh, not criticizing anybody, but just having some fun with some of the things that I see in the ring that I think uh, we could all laugh about together and enjoy and learn from. So hi, Cindy, uh, Cindy Harps Woodling with the um, Spanish Water Dogs, welcome. And who else is here please today? So um, yeah, we're gonna talk about three in-ring bloopers that I see um, as a judge. And tell us what your breed is, where you're from. And also I'm gonna ask you what have you seen as in-ring bloopers? So it'd be sort of fun to hear from you. Um, you all are here today. And what's the funniest thing you've seen or what have you done that you thought, oh my goodness, I can't believe I did that. So that's what I want to hear today. And, you know, sometimes people make in-ring bloopers and they're so, and they apologize a lot. And there's no need to apologize. Just smile and say, okay, let me do that again. Um, or you say to yourself, well, I'm going to fix that next time. Whatever it is that you're doing um, that is a blooper and that you recognize it's an opportunity for growth and change. So um, I'm excited to hear from you. Uh, Cindy, What what's the funniest thing you've seen in the ring or that you've done? Bending over and skirts riding up. Definitely a wardrobe malfunction. You know, a lot of ladies have found the um, tight, uh, um, they're called Spanx, and they just fit underneath your dress and you just wear them and they are tight to the skin. So it avoids that wardrobe malfunction. All right. What other in bloopers and who else is here today and where are you from? So uh, my first in-ring blooper is, um, <laughs> yeah, hi, 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 <laughs> hi, Cindy. Um, my first in-ring blooper is, guess what? You didn't watch the judge's pattern beforehand and don't ask what the pattern is. You do what you feel like doing. Like it's, it's okay to have that moment where you forget what the pattern is. And we all have done that, but at least clarify, ask a clarifying question over and back or the corner. And, you know, it might be, um, you know, 11 o'clock in the morning and people have been, you know, people have been standing around the ring for hours or at least for an hour watching um, and then they get in the ring and they have like a mind blow, right? And so they forget what they're doing. And, you know, it, it may seem, it may seem like a small thing to you, but it, it really shows that you're not focused or paying attention. And so it's an easy fix, just focus and pay more attention and make it so that you think your dog is so good that he deserves to have the best presentation ever, right? Your dog is so good that he deserves the best presentation ever. All right, so who else is here and who wants to talk about what one of their in-ring bloopers are? And I'm going to talk a little bit about Dog Show Mentor right now and tell you that we are so delighted that we're going into our second year of mastery. And I would love for you to make your application and meet you and see if mastery is right for you. It's been right for a lot of people this year, and we've had some great new win rates. Um, if you're serious about winning, uh, you should definitely apply. You know, why go to a show without a coach? Why? go and not understand. Hey, Tanya, nice to see you. Papillon's from Louisiana. Thank you for, for joining us. Um, you know, why, why shouldn't you join the best program that's available out there today? And 
we've put up the mastery application in the um, in the chat for you so that you know you've got it right there at your fingertips and you can always go back to it later if you want. All right. So what else about Dog Show Mentor is special for you? Um, we also have uh, monthly workshops. And so this month we're going to have Rate Your Dog. I haven't done a Rate Your Dog for a year. And so whether you have a dog and you're just starting out, um, or if you have a top special, we can still help you with this Rate Your Dog workshop. It's interactive. Hey, Brian Pollock, Mini Schnauzers from Lewiston, New York. Haven't seen you in a while, but welcome back. And Marianne Parks. Good morning. Thank, good morning to you, Marianne. And Pugs from Longview. So what were your, uh, what were the in-ring bloopers that you've seen that you thought were funny or interesting? Kathy says, Kathy from Wisconsin, my first blooper was being first in the ring with several behind me. The judge instructed us to go around. For some reason, I did a courtesy turn before going around. The exhibitors behind me thought I was a nut. I knew better. I just totally goofed up. Yeah, so that that is, is a little bit of a blooper. It does sort of um, tag you as a beginner. But guess what? Um, everybody was a beginner once, and that's forgivable. It just does take a little bit extra time out of every moment, right? Jackie Wooden says she's got Dalmatians and Harriers in Bakersfield, California. I bet everybody wishes they were in California right now. I hear they're having a, a cool spot on the on the East Coast uh, right here now. It's a uh, it's a pretty balmy uh, sixty degrees in Vancouver, Washington. All right. So hey hey Sandy, it's so nice to see you. Here back from the national. I have a doozy of a blooper. Okay, let's see what you got. <laughs> All right. So I think Sandy has uh Basenjis, but I think she shows several, several different breeds. Um, so uh yeah, as I, as I was saying, I think we've got um California and Florida, the uh, the warmest places, but Vancouver's um it's pretty nice right now. So in mastery, we've got um, we've got two meetings a month, and we've also got um, quarterly speakers. And last year we had um, a uh, a mindset coach um, top level, and as one of our quarterly speakers, we had um, Valerie Nunes Atkinson was one of our speakers, and we've got. Um, Shannon Toops coming. She's a, a coat and condition expert coming to do a workshop um, specially targeted to our mastery members and the breeds that they have um, and ways to help them. Hey, Sandy, finally made it. Welcome. We're talking about in-ring bloopers today. Do you have any for yourself or do you have any that you've seen other people do? That's sort of fun. And I, what I love about bloopers is that there's such a great opportunity to learn. And I've got a list of, well, I've got a list of about 20 of them that I think are the top ones. And we're just doing three today. So let's see which one is next. And in the meantime, we're going to um, hear from you. Sandy says, hold on. It must be a long one. So I'll have to read it. But um, yeah, so Basenji one. Uh, bred by exhibitor and best of breed, went into the group, made the cut, moved into group one position. Judge signals us to do a final go around. I tripped. The judge looked at me, shook her head, and put me sixth out of six. Well, that's an interesting blooper. That I'm sorry about that. Hmm. Well, I just don't know what to say, but I'm sorry that you tripped and everybody does it and you just don't want to put it where you're in first out of six. Okay. Anyway. Oh, I bet you did. I bet because tripping is something that that's really hard to, you know, keep from doing. It's like dropping a glass. I dropped a glass this morning and it broke. 
first thing, 7.30. So um, things happen and then we get over them and we go on to the next one. So here's to your next group one. Congratulations ahead of time. All right. So in ring bloopers, let's see what our, our next one is. And while we're, while we're doing that, while we're thinking about what is Lee's next in-ring blooper, we're going to talk about our next workshop being Rate Your Dog, which is what I was talking about before. And so Rate Your Dog is really fun and interesting. And it's a system that I created so that people could really evaluate their dogs on a dispassionate level, because that's what the judge has to do. Someone was saying to me today, oh, um, you've been very good to such and such a uh, handler. And I said, well, actually, we don't speak, um, but I just judge the dogs. And I think that it's, you know, this person has had uh, several very good dogs. And so it doesn't matter how I feel about the person. Um, it's it's the it's all about the dogs so know that and know that most judges do that i mean we really want to put up the best dog because if we don't we look stupid <laughs> right if you if you put your friends up and they don't have a good dog then that's really stupid isn't it it just makes you look silly so always as a judge my policy is put up the best dog because otherwise I have an in-ring blooper and I make mistakes too. You know, everybody does. So just figure it out and um, go on to the next one. So who else has an in-ring blooper? Who has, who else has one? Sandy, you must have one. Hey, Michael, nice to see you. Hi. I know you've been, uh, you've been um, good to dog show mentor and, um, and you've been um, referring a few people to us. So thank you so much. So your next in-ring blooper, blooper is that you're not ready. Your dog isn't stacked at all or properly for the lineup or for the exam. So, you know, how is that, 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 how does that happen? As a judge, I wonder, you know, when you come back, you know, when you, when you come in and there's a lineup and you stack your dogs, how is it that your dog isn't ready? I mean, if you're, if you're an exhibitor and you've been exhibiting for five minutes, you know that the judge comes in and if there's a lineup, particularly, they want to see your dog and they're going to compare that dog and they're going to have first impressions. And what did they say about first impressions? They say first impressions are lasting impressions. Erica says, I didn't hear the judge talking to me because I was so focused trying to stack my dog. Erica, that's so true, right? And it's, and it's called flooding and it's an amygdala thing. And when you're stressed and you're focused, then you sometimes literally can't hear. That's true. So, so the key is that you need to go to more shows and really focus on what you're doing, but also focus, keep an ear open. It's like that. It's what I call the mediator's ear. So keep that ear open to hearing the judge. Just listen while you're focused on your dog and you'll be fine next time. Sandy says, I fell trying to stand up. Judge didn't see. Well, then your blooper isn't, isn't really a blooper, Sandy, if the judge didn't see it. But I'm sorry you fell, and I hope you were okay. But, you know, sometimes when we have dogs that we have to go on the ground for, if we have to kneel, that could be getting up can sometimes be tricky. So just make sure you don't do it. You know, it's... Being graceful in the ring is, it's, it takes practice, right? It takes practice to be graceful in the ring because 
it's all part of that dance that you do with your dog and it's all choreographed. And if you think it's not, you're wrong. Everything, every move, every step is choreographed. And that's why I need a coach. And that's why I need dog show mentor. So if you join dog show mentor now, join premium, you get all the workshops every month for free. So if you join Dog Show Mentor now, your first workshop at the end of October is free. And that workshop is October 26th and it's Rate right Your Dog and everybody needs it. I don't care how good you are. You need to sit down and rate your dog. And when you have somebody like me, who's an experienced coach, um, sort of standing over your shoulder, um, helping you, it makes it a lot easier. Okay, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. I had the pleasure of showing my uh, long-haired dachshund to you in Carson City. It's a great experience. Thank you for telling me. That's so wonderful. Thank you. Sandy says, I usually don't get down, but I needed ears. <laughs> get that girl. Get that girl putting her ears up. That's right. Okay, Lisa, if you had an in-ring blooper. So, um... So what I'm here today talking about is in-ring bloopers. And frankly, I thought a lot of you would have a lot more bloopers to talk about. Well, Pam says, watching groups once, I saw someone with a small, slow breed push to the front of the line and head into the non-sporting group first. All the dogs behind that one had to wait to give him time to go ahead so they could move at a decent speed. I'm pretty sure it was that person's first time in the group and they were excited to get in there. That's right. I bet it was. And that's such a nice thing to say, um, Pam, about, about your fellow exhibitor. And I like that you assumed that she was, ex she or he was excited to get in there rather than um, pushing to the front for some other reason. And you know what? That happens too. Um, but I think it only happens once. And probably some nice person told, I think you said it was a woman, told, oh no, him, him, um, told him at the end, you know, hey, um, it's usually uh, size and speed. And actually the, uh, the steward should have, have assisted with that. But that's, again, something that you probably only do once. And that's something that you can keep from doing again, right? Okay, so so we've got, you know, Dog Show Mentor has so much to offer. We have um, Dog Show Mastery. We have our premium. We have workshops. We have everything that you might want. And we have me as a coach. And then, as I said, I have quarterly speakers. And those are mastery workshops. And if they don't fill up um, with just mastery, then uh, sometimes I'm able to offer them to other dog show mentor members. Um, so that's one of the great features that dog show mentor you also have um, with mastery. You have access to me. Um, pretty much it's open access and so that gives you an opportunity to ask questions uh, when we're not having direct meetings, when we're not having master classes, um, maybe over a weekend. I usually am able to answer unless I'm judging, in which case that doesn't work out so well. So Michael says, I had a judge fall on my dog. Oh my gosh. And there's a smiley face after that. The dog is okay, I guess. Um, that is definitely an in-ring blooper for judges. And yeah, judges aren't perfect. We make mistakes sometimes. And Mary says, I ran right past the table. The judge just laughed and went back to the table, made the judge laugh too. I love that because, you know, one of the key factors is have fun with your dog and make sure your dog has fun with you. And that's something that we say every single time we meet in Dog Show Mentor because it's so easy to get focused on your dog and focused on what's going on and focused on what you're doing wrong. But what about focusing on what you're doing right? 
And so when we have these bloopers, what we what we really talk about is how can you fix that? How can you do it right and get that cemented in your memory? So I really, I really love that. Lisa says I was showing my PEM and didn't pay attention to the job. Oh, and on the down and back, she wanted a free stack at the end, but I thought she wanted him to bait to show expression and just about threw him at her. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. Well, <laughs> it's okay. Lisa, it's okay. Because guess what? You can always stand back and look, tell the exhibitor, you know, let me see the side and smile. You know, it's always easy, easy to smile, easy to have fun. Stacy says when showing multiple dogs in the same breed and doing the armband shuffle and showing the wrong armband to the judge and the steward and having to hurry and get the correct one, which never goes right or smoothly and holding up the class. Yeah. Yeah, Stacy, I get that. It happens and it does happen to everybody. And we, we know that Michael says his dog is fine. Thank you. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that could have, that could have gone very wrong. Um, and again, things that could be avoided sometimes, but sometimes we lose our balance. I mean, the ground is uneven and we try to find the best place to examine dogs um, because the ground is more even in some places than others. Um, so, and about the third in-ring blooper we're going to talk about today. And what do you think it might be? That's what I want to know from you. What is your best one and what is the next one? So here we are and we're talking about Dog Show Mentor and we're talking about the workshop that's going to happen October 26th. We're talking about Dog Show Mentor Premium where if you join now, you get the workshop free and all the workshops for free. And the workshops are pretty different. Um, we have a couple of signature ones that are a really classic and important. And so we do those, excuse me. Um, Michael says, I walked in with the wrong breed. <laughs> oh God, since the steward insisted due to my armband number, stack the Wheaton with the Carrie Blues. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, I don't know whose blooper that was. That sounds like a steward blooper. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so let's see. So you're not ready. Your dog is not stacked and you're not ready for the lineup. So let me finish that one. So if you're not stacked and you're not ready for the lineup, What's the judge going to do? They're going to judge your dog as it is, right? And if the dog is standing with the rear underneath him or cow hocked or east west when they're not supposed to, I mean, some breeds are supposed to stand a little bit um, towing, you know, out a little bit. And But a lot of breeds aren't, but they do anyway. So what is the judge supposed to do with that? The handler is standing there. And you walk up, you, you know, you've looked at the lineup, you walk up, you're going to walk down the line and the first dog is baiting, but you look down and there's the front doing this when it should be doing this, right? Or you look at the rear, you're walking by and look at the rear and you can't help but notice that the dog is standing cow hocked and um, it should not. Sandy says, a good friend of mine who will remain nameless drove two states away to a show and brought the wrong dog. Oh my gosh. Okay. So Sandy, you know, that happened, um, many, many years ago to a Rottweiler person and she showed it as the wrong dog. And she called it the right dog's name in the ring and someone caught it and apparently caught it on video. And that person lost her AKC privileges for 10 years. I think she quit the whole game. But you got to be careful about that. I mean, 
I think my, my best, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I've never done that. I've never done that. I've never walked in the ring with the wrong breed or the wrong dog. Um, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of if any of these have I done, not the wrong breed, not the wrong dog. I, I have, I have tripped. I have fallen face, fa face plant on the mats. Well, you know what? I still won. And I don't think it was a sympathy win because we, we had to go around a couple more times. Those were in the days when you had to gate Rottweilers around the ring four and five times. Um, they really wanted you to work the dogs. And now if the dogs can make it around the ring once, sometimes it's a lot. So um, I think I've done the wrong down and back over rather than down or down rather than over. Um, and again, we just have to, um, uh, when you remember, you just do the right, the right thing. Or if the judge says um, over, sometimes it doesn't matter to me what the, you know, where, which way the dog goes, but AKC likes them all go on the same, all have the same opportunity. So for example, we don't walk down the line. You know, you used to see that a lot. We would walk down the line and send each dog over and back a second time in the place that they were. But if, particularly if you're outdoors, the footing could be different. It could be, uh, the ground could be slanted or sloped. And then you're in a situation where you just can't correct whatever your dog is doing. So the judge should actually call you up to where they want you to gate from and all the dogs should gate from the same spot. So there, there are, you'll see a lot of different things um, if, if we do that. And it, of course, indoors, you can't do that because you can't cross mats because that's dangerous. So everybody has to use either the the triangle situation. So either the down and back or the triangle or the L or there's really no place to make a T most of the time. Um, if anybody remembers doing T's. All right. So we're just about out of time. Um, Marie is here. Thank you, Marie. I took a boxer in for a friend. Try to stack him like a springer. Talk about nerves. Getting the best of you. At least I gave everyone a good laugh. I am so glad. And that sounds like fun. And it's always good to show different breeds because you learn so much about your own breed. Tiffany says, can we talk more about that? Someone had the wrong armband in a ring and took the breed. Ooh, ooh, the wrong armband in the breed in the ring and took the breed. Well, that would be the judge. Well, it, if it was the wrong armband for that dog, so if it had a five on it, it should have been a seven. Um, and there was a five and a seven in the class, so the judge marked the five absent and the seven was there. I could see how that could be, but if they have, yeah, I mean, if you had two fives, you should have noticed that as your judge. It's, it's an interesting I'm not sure, Tiffany, um, how, how you mean that question. So if you want to put more in there. Um, and hi, hi uh, Michael says, hi, Gina. Jackie says, the first time I showed a Harrier, I held her tail level like a Dalmatian instead of up correctly. Yeah, yeah, that can happen. So notice, um, nope, hound band for herding dog. Oh, hmm. Yeah, well, it should have noticed that, I guess. The judge should have noticed if it was the wrong armband. band. Um, but it's particularly in the group, um, the judge has to look at the armband when and the number when we mark our books to make sure that, because so many times you have three or four armbands on and you're shuffling and you have the wrong one on. 
and it just happens. So that's why we double check. Yeah. Yeah. Different number. Yeah. Tiffany, that's, it, you know, it should, it, it's the handler's responsibility, but ultimately it rests, you know, the buck stops at the judge. Cool. Okay. So we're at the end of our time. Um, I'm going to remind you about the dog show mentor programs and the uh, standalone workshops. Please um, sign up for one. We've got all the links in the chat now. Um, and Michael says the steward should catch the armband issues. The steward should catch it first, but the judge is ultimately responsible for not um, noticing um, incorrect armbands. Yeah. Yep. The buck stops here. So, um, and I'm a dog show mentor. And so the buck stops here as well. I'm here to help you. I've been helping owner handlers for over six years and I am in your court and I have your back um, if you want me to. So if you want to really up your game and notice what judges notice and correct what judges want um, and know more what judges want, um, come to one of my programs and I'd love to have you. Tiffany says, can't record the correct dog. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's rough. That's rough. All right. Emily Whittier, the dog show mentor. Thank you all for bringing your in-ring bloopers. And I hope you had fun and I hope you learned a lot because that's what we're here for. And we're here every Wednesday at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. Thanks for being here. I'm Lee Whittier, the mindset coach and your dog show mentor. Bye everybody. <laughs>